Hello, my name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And this is another Sales Expert Insight interview. And today I'm joined by Catherine Brinkman from BHY Consulting. Hey, Catherine, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing well. How are you? Yeah. And what we want to talk about today is Catherine's got this great quote on her LinkedIn uh, profile, which I suggest you go check out. But she says, selling is a contact sport. If you can't roll with the punches, you get knocked out. You need to get back up and close. And and let's face it, um, sales can be pretty brutal. And uh, if you get knocked down a lot... Um, just as, I mean, you, you know, the analogy obviously with boxing or, or mixed martial arts exactly. or whatever, yeah. uh, you know, if you get knocked down onto the canvas a lot, it, uh, eventually it gets harder and harder to pick yourself back up and, uh, sort of, you know, expose yourself to another flurry of punches. So Catherine, so how, how do you advise salespeople who maybe are taking a lot of punches, getting knocked down a lot? How do you advise them to not just get back up again, but maybe get back up and avoid the next punch coming their way. Um, well, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. It really is a sports analogy. And when you're in athletics, you make mistakes, you get back up, but you focus on what did I do wrong? How can I make it better? That's where that analogy really comes from. So if you're making a lot of calls and you're not getting where you want to get, go ahead and take that opportunity. Think, okay, what would I do better? How would I change it? And then you'll improve. Yeah. So what are some of the things that you have seen people do that can improve them or get them off a, a winning or a losing streak, sorry, should I say, <laughs> or when they're, when they're taking, a lot of, taking a lot of shots? Uh, yeah. And what are some of the things you advise people? Where do you start? I mean, it's really a mental game, right? Like mm -hmm. the first thing is that it's a sales numbers situation. So mm -hmm. you should calculate and realize how many dials you need to make, how many contacts, how many meetings. And then that will set the tone for what you should be doing. A lot of that then comes in directly into attitude. So think of every no getting you closer to that yes. That's the biggest thing that I've learned is whenever I hear no, it's like, okay, fine. It's either an objection no, and I have to really root out what's mm -hmm. the actual objection, where did I miss them, or maybe it really isn't the right time. Maybe it really is that they're going through a reorg. I'm not going to be upset about it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to gather that information, keep track, follow up in a couple of months. So that's an interesting one that you say there. So um, when you hear no, so instead of just taking no as an, oh, that's it, it's over, I just need to move on or whatever, it's really exploring what kind of no that is and, yes. how, and how real the no is. Mm -hmm, definitely. Um, there's a lot of different kinds of no's and some of them really are, I know most salespeople will be like, well, no, no, no really means no. <laughs> Sometimes no means no. There sure. really are budget constraints this time in the economy. There really are reorgs where people are not able to have the time to do certain things or sell certain things. So it's understanding, it's being like empathetic to what is that no? Conversely, okay, well, they're saying, no, they don't have time. When I know in reality, yeah, you have time. You just don't want to make the time. Mm -hmm. And it's through questioning that you can figure that out. So I think that's the key point that you're hitting on there, that it's you need to develop that rapport and that questioning with the person. So even if they are saying no, um, you're, you're in a position and they're in a position that there's enough trust there that they're going to maybe give you a little bit more insight than just a flat no, right? Yes. And I mean, you said two words, rapport and trust. Without mm -hmm. those, you really don't have a sale. Yeah. So if you're getting a lot of flat no's, then probably the first thing to look at is, are you... Are you developing any kind of rapport or building trust or are you adding value? So is that something that you advise people like if you're getting a lot of flat no's, uh, have a look at what did you do prior to that no? Completely. Take a look at what is your process? Who are you calling? Who mm -hmm. are the people that you're speaking to? Maybe you're not asking the right questions. It's the right person. You're not asking the right questions. You're not figuring out what's their dominant buying motive. So looking back at what's the buyer type, who is it, is my process really fitting with them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I like it. And, and getting back to the to the the combat sports analogy because it's I, I like that it's it if you take like mixed martial arts for instance right there's a lot of different components to it so if you maybe lose a few fights uh, just like in sales if if you're losing a lot of deals you sometimes have to 
take a step back and look at all aspects of what you're doing, right? Not just kind of focus in on what was the last objection they made, but how is my overall approach? You know, have I, am I, am I, am I working hard enough in all the different areas? Yeah, exactly. And it really is. It's moving parts. It's just like, like you mentioned with martial arts or ice hockey or boxing or baseball. The, the analogy really came from baseball being a catcher. If you look at all those things, if certain pieces of your equipment aren't working, you can't do your job. Mm -hmm. So it's really making sure that everything's moving correctly, including thinking about your clothes. Right. So I'll, when you have those pieces together, you're not going to get knocked down as much. And the hits won't be as tough because you've taken that opportunity to research and look at what's going on and really focus on, okay, my next step is what? Right. But do you think then that, um, you know, salespeople take enough time to do analysis or sales managers take enough time to do analysis of, of you know, why they're, they're losing deals or whatever? Because let's face it, sales is always frenetic and yeah, everybody wants to move <laughs> forward and just like, yeah, whatever. Right. They said, no, just let's move on. But do you think they need to carve out more time to actually analyze what's going on and making sure that they're not missing something? Something that... I recommend really is every single sales call, even those that go great and you close on the first contact, which you're going to have, what went well? Something went well. So focusing on and looking back, what did I do right and what would I change? Mm -hmm. um, and that's for a salesperson. For a sales manager role, it would be spending time to actually get your to know your sales reps because then you can determine who's coachable, who's not coachable, right. and figure out how they operate and how they work, and then go on sales calls and see where they're making the errors, see where if they know where they're making the mistakes and where they can improve, and then coach that way. So it's kind of reverse. You're not telling them, you're asking them. So do you think as, as salespeople or sales managers or that we spend enough time really looking at ourselves, right? Because I think often we're always looking for somebody to come in and tell us what to do or tell us, you know, how to fix an issue or we're waiting for the company to, you know, bring somebody like you in to give us sales training. Do you think people invest enough in themselves? <laughs> no. Um, I say that. I just worked with someone today that is a senior VP, and we did some executive coaching, and I asked her to reflect on something for five minutes, and she spent three minutes and said, okay, Catherine, I'm done. And I said, no, no, five minutes. <laughs> so you still have two minutes. Like, what else did you change? And she thought she was done at three, but when I had her draw a line on the paper after the three minutes and the two minutes, she came up with three more reasons mm -hmm. why she could have changed something and how that would have affected her call. So, no, we don't spend enough time at all. It's hard, right? It's sure. hard to look at ourselves. <laughs> Um, and that's why I guess, uh, you know, call planning can be really important because it gives you something to reflect on afterwards, right? Yes. Yes. So, um, so what are some other ways that you advise people who maybe are in a bit of a rut or having a hard time? Some other ways that they can they can sort of get themselves back on track. I mean, if you're talking like a day to day, one thing can be if you just call your favorite client. Right. See how they're doing. How's everything working with the product? You're not selling them anything. They're a conversation. You know, you've helped them. You personally have generated revenue and you've increased your pocketbook. You're going to feel good when you hang up. Mm -hmm. And then you can move on. So you're in that right attitude. Another piece could be you go and you go for a walk. I mean, it <laughs> sounds silly, but just get up from your desk or wherever you are, take a break, come back. And then the other piece is really mental. You have to remember that whomever you're talking to next on that call, whoever's next, they didn't do anything to you. Right. <laughs> you cannot carry that over because they'll pick up on it. Yeah. So just thinking of the mindset of when you've been in a situation where someone called you and they're negative and they're yeah. upset, how did that affect you? You don't want to do that to a customer or a prospect. No, I mean, I think that's a great point is, um, you know, self-fulfilling prophecies or whatever or projecting, right? Because, yeah, yeah. Uh, any of us who've taken a call from somebody and you're like, you're trying to sell me something. You don't even sound, <laughs> you sound unhappy. You sound like you don't believe in your own product. You, yeah. um, but that's an easy thing to get into, right? Because it's it's easy to start expecting, oh, no, this is just going to be another no. Right. 
and you have to get out of that. You really do have to mind, have the mindset that every no will get you closer to the yes, even if you're already deep in the sales process and you get an objection. Okay, great. I got this far. What do I do? What did I make the mistake on in the sales process to add value? Where did I miss that? And then people need to think of the no as, well, they're still interested because they said no. They didn't hang up on you. Right. If you hang up on me, I'm probably not going to call you back. <laughs> it depends on, like, um, but that would be a solid, I don't want you on my list if you're going to hang up. But if it's a no and it goes back into that reading the person or understanding, they're still interested somewhere. I have to figure that out as a salesperson. Right. And just picking up again on what you said about calling uh, calling your favorite client or a client that you were successful well with, um, that's a great way, obviously, that's a great idea because that's a great way of reminding yourself that, well, hey, I am, you know, I can be successful. I've done it before. There's no reason I can't do it again. So I like that. Right. That's kind of a great psychological way of psychologically putting yourself back in the right frame of mind thinking, yeah, maybe I'm getting a lot of no's, but hey, you know, this customer love we had a great sales cycle they love the product everything's going well yep exactly so what are some of the what are some of the most common mistakes you've seen um sales make when you know as i said maybe when they're not on having a good run but, uh, what are some of the things you've seen where people you know make exacerbate the problem um, the biggest problem is follow through. They give up after, you know, the third or the fourth contact and mm -hmm. people are busy at the end of the day. Sure. Like it's, it's our bread and butter. That's where we make our money. That's what our job is. It's not their job. Our prospect is supposed to just, they're supposed to benefit from what we do. It's up to them. So making sure that you follow through and a piece of that should be determining how big is that account? How big is that fish? So am I going to follow up weekly Am I going to follow up quarterly? But never giving up until you kind of basically the no that's a hang up. That's when mm -hmm. you're like, okay, fine, I'm done. <laughs> so that's one piece would be to make sure that you set the bar of where your no is going to be. Mm -hmm. Another piece would be planning. I don't think enough people do it. It doesn't take that long. And once you get your plan fine-tuned, you can reuse that with other customers and clients. You tweak the questions just a little, but then it becomes rote and it becomes natural. And I think beginners don't do that enough. And I also think when, when we get more seasoned, we're like, oh, I know what I'm doing. And then you get into a situation right. and you're like, oh, that's where you get knocked down. Even as a seasoned person, <laughs> you kind of just get thrown against the ropes and you're like, whoa, where did that come from? I didn't plan properly. <laughs> Yeah, and and I think that's a that's a key point because uh, you know obviously every salesperson has their appointments on their calendar, right? So mm -hmm. you have all your appointments, your calls, your web meetings, maybe face to face, whatever it is. Um, but how many salespeople have the prep time for that call set aside on their calendar? Not a lot. <laughs> the, the better ones, the higher producers do. Um, I just saw a clip with Warren Buffett and um, Bill Gates, and Warren Buffett literally has his calendar and it's empty. And Bill Gates took it from him on this talk show and opened it up and said, "See, it's it's empty." And Warren Buffett said, yeah, because if I don't take time to plan for myself and what I'm supposed to do and how do I prepare, how am I supposed to help someone else? Mm -hmm. exactly. And that was eye opening. Yeah, and I think that's another key takeaway that on the planning is that you really do need to set aside time. And I think even more so if you're on a if you're on a uh, a lean streak, right? Uh, yeah. Perhaps a, perhaps you need to put extra time into the planning. And it's giving you that step back, right? It's mm -hmm. giving you that time where you're not hearing the nose, so you can get your attitude adjusted as well. So it's sort of an educational piece of you're planning everything out, you're writing it, you're typing, whatever you do. And then you're also taking that break from hearing the nose and you're reviewing your script or your process mm -hmm. and you're kind of getting psyched. And then theoretically it becomes this thing of like, I plan this, I want to see if it works. So right. right there you get your enthusiasm back. Yeah, no, I think that's a that's a great point as well is uh, is getting that enthusiasm back because as we said earlier, you know, if you don't have the enthusiasm or you can't at least switch it on, um, it's right. going to be a much harder road. So, in the last couple of minutes, what uh, what other piece of advice would you have to a salesperson who is having a hard time? We're you know we're one quarter into the year and maybe things haven't started off that great. It would be reviewing who are you targeting. Mm -hmm. I mean, are you are these inbound leads? Are you outbound? Let's say it's inbound leads, inside sales for a moment. 
what's going on that you're not closing? Is it a specific buyer type? Is it something, a solution you're offering that's not a fit? Conversely, if you're outside sales, okay, well, who am I calling on? Who's the actual decision maker? Am I talking to the right person? A lot of times people are not speaking to the right person. Mm -hmm. They go through their entire sales process and they realize, oh, wait, I should have had procurement involved or really it's the CFO that signs off. So they didn't do that. So really figuring out who is my target? Mm -hmm. Am I going after the right person? Am I using the right language for them? Am I appealing to their actual need and what they want? No, it's good, good, good advice. Okay, and uh, before we go, Catherine, could you just tell the viewers a little bit more about yourself, how they can learn more about you and your company? Sure. So I have been in sales, I joke, since I was in first grade. <laughs> um, I started selling gift wrap paper. Um, I sold in college for our school newspaper. And it just kind of went from there. I was a political fundraiser for a number of years. And I say I sold rubber chicken dinners at $1,000 a piece. <laughs> Um, and then I had a lucrative sales career with Dale Carnegie in mm -hmm. Silicon Valley for a number of years, became a sales instructor and still facilitate for them. And in March of 2016, I started my own foundation and company where we focus on sales, marketing, actually onboarding and business planning. And that's at bhyconsulting.com. And the LinkedIn, I was an early adapter to that. It's just uh, Catherine Brinkman at LinkedIn. And then I'm at Twitter, which is Kat Brinkman, at Kat Brinkman. Excellent. Well, Catherine, thank you very much for joining us. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. And we'll see you for another expert interview really soon. Thanks again, Thank Catherine. you. Thank you, John. So I encourage you to subscribe to salespop.net, the online sales magazine. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel and then comment. Get involved in the conversation. Love to hear what you have to say.